Hello, welcome to another episode of Trey Talks. I'm sitting here with the um, legend herself, uh, multi-stellar um, award winner, um, Grammy nominated, uh, Mrs. Marna Somers. Hello. Hello. It's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to, pleasure be to here. meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, you're a legend in your own right. And um, I thank you for coming here today. Thank you. And I um, can't begin this interview without thanking your cousin, <laughs> Dottie Jones, for mm -hmm. making this happen today. Yes. Um, so I want to start out with your childhood and talk about um, your upbringing, um, your family, and what, what, what was it like in the household? Oh, we had a very peaceful um, household. My mother and father were Christians, and uh, it was just two of us. My half a sister, um, Alinda, and myself. And uh, <clears throat> we didn't have our dad long. The Lord took him when I was eight. My sister was five. And uh, but the three of us. My mother as a single parent. You know, she trusted the Lord. That was her slogan, you know, trust God. Mm -hmm. And um, she brought us up to fear God and to, you know, embrace him at an early age. So um, we had a beautiful household. Nice. Incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and did you grow up in a refreshing Springs Church yes. of God in Christ? Yes, I did. Really? So <laughs> yes. your family has a history there. Yes. Awesome. Amazing. Yes. Um, what was it like growing up in refreshing Springs back then? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. The, the um, founding pastor, um, the elder A.D. head, and he's n no longer with us. But um, oops, he was a strict man of God. Mm -hmm. And um, he taught the word. He preached the word. He lived the word. And, you know, he expected us to live it like he did. Mm -hmm. And um, like very strict, but uh, I'm glad about it now. Mm -hmm. You know, back then we, you know, oh God, he... You know, past man. But, um, you know, he believed in what, in the word. And uh, so he stressed that. And uh, he, here we are today still believing in the word of God. Nice. Amen. Um, your introduction to music and piano, would you say that began at Refreshing Spring? Of course. Um, okay. My um, music, musical mentor was the late Theodore King. Hmm. And um, Theodore King and Lorenzo Dupree, they came doing, came to Refreshing Spring during my childhood. Wow. And uh, God, I was just so overwhelmed with their talents and mm -hmm. their gifts. And uh, I would sit at, on the um, piano stool um, by him and um, the, gen the gentleman before him, um, Cecil Jackson. And I mean, I was really young, maybe three, four years old. And, you know, they would try to re try to move me. And he said, no, let her sit here. Hmm. And um, I did. I sat with him. Then Theodore came and um, he mentored me. And um, it was a blessing. And you learned organ and piano, correct? Yeah, yeah. I tell people I'm not a performing musician, but I, I do have to teach from the piano or keyboard, you mm -hmm. know, when I get before a choir, what have you. Um, I, I can move faster and I don't like to bore people. Mm -hmm. And um, so usually I'm going to go to that keyboard to teach it. Mm -hmm. You know, then I get out of the way for those that can play. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, what's your most memorable childhood memory? Oof. Most memorable childhood memory. Hmm. <laughs> what comes to my mind is um, on one occasion when Refreshing Spring had moved somewhat in the city of D.C. We were on Maryland, 14th and Maryland Avenue, Northeast, and we didn't live far uh, from the may maybe four or five blocks. <clears throat> my sister was never enthused about music and coming to church rehearsals and all that, and I was. Mm -hmm. So I would always be walking ahead of her, and I would be directing as I was walking. <laughs> and she would, Myrna, Myrna, and I took her, and she said, "Stop that! You're <laughs> embarrassing me." <laughs> I, 
I never, I can't forget that. Wow. I often think about it because you know, it was in me. Mm -hmm. It was in me, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of your favorite choirs and artists growing up. Oh, that's easy. I was a lover of the late Maddie Moss Clark. Really? Oh, my goodness. And uh, as I was growing up in church and in music and thanks to Theodore King and what have you, she would trust me to work with him to prepare the choir mm -hmm. when she would come into the D.C. area. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, Twinkie wasn't quite old enough yet, mm -hmm. you know, so she, she used me a lot and I'm grateful um, to, to that. But um, Madam Moss Clark, I love the carol vans. Really? Um, Shirley Caesar especially. Mm -hmm. And I loved her, her fire, her mm -hmm. energy. Um, oh, who else? But you have that same you fire and so? energy I, of uh, Maddie Moss and Shirley <laughs> Caesar. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I admire them. Um, trying to think of some of the male artists, but at that time, I was really wrapped up. The Gospel Pearls came, mm -hmm. came out. Um, I love their music because it was, it was different. Mm -hmm. It was different. And um, yeah, so I kind of grasped that style of music. But it, it was quite a few back in the Davis Sisters. Mm -hmm. I love the Davis <laughs> love Sisters. Love the Davis Sisters. Um, Mavis Staples, yes, yes. yeah, um, you know they they were just good and you know just they had a sound that um, was just so prominent and so real. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't mask. You know what you heard was was that richness. Right. Yeah, that, I'm not saying it's not today, but it was more profound back then. Mm -hmm. Would you, what musician would you say or artist inspired you the most growing up? Would you say Theodore King and? The, 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 naturally, Theodore King, because I was around him all the time. Mm -hmm. um, as, ooh, as I grew up, let's see, remember Alfred, Alfred Bolden, was he? I've heard of that Alfred name. Bolden, yes. I think he was out of Detroit, if I'm not mistaken, fantastic organist. Mm. Um, I enjoy him. Maceo Wood. Yes, I love yeah, Maceo Wood. Yeah, I love Maceo Wood. Christian Tabernacle. Yeah, yeah. Um, those, those are the only ones that come to my mind. Billy Preston. I met him later. Mm. And uh, he was awesome. Amazing. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, um, at what age did you write your first song? And what was the <laughs> name of it? Believe it or not, my first song I, I copied from... Um, the late Martin Luther King, from his um, speech, I Have a Dream. Really? And um, that year when they came to D.C., uh, what was that, 67? 67. 67, I think it was. I, I wrote my first song, I Have a Dream. Really? Yeah, it was, no, it was okay, but it was no biggie. How old were you? <laughs> oh, gosh, 67, now I graduated that year. Come on, Myrna, 17. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> um, let's talk about you and the Refreshnets. Am I pronouncing it right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Named after the church, Refreshing Spring. Mm -hmm. um, we were for basically a family group. Um, we were all cousins. Um, ooh, yeah. We were, we were pretty good. Um, were you all performing um, locally? Okay. Locally, however, um, Dion Warwick's father heard us um, through at that time through the minister that was that would take us here and there. Um, George Davis, mm -hmm. uh, Elder George Davis, and he invited us to was it Hob? I think it was Hob Records. It yeah, was a label. HV, yeah, yeah Hob Records. at that time. And uh, we recorded one of Dottie's. She had written, I'm Determined. Hmm. And um, gosh, what was the flip side of that? Something I'd written. I can't even think of it now. I think it was Stay With God, but I'm not sure. Hmm. But um, that was a beautiful experience. Wow. 
Yeah. And that was Dion Warwick's father, father that mm -hmm. made that possible. I'm trying to think of his nickname. He had a nickname. Can't think of And it. years later, you would share the stage with, with Dionne Warwick Dion. at mm -hmm. Symphony with the Divas. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. And she brought that up. Really? Yes, she did. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, what style of music was refreshing as? Was it like early contemporary gospel music or was it more traditional? It was traditional because being that I love the Carl Vance, mm -hmm. I copied them. Mm. And uh, yeah, we were, we were traditional, you know, but uh, we were good. I mean, you know, the, the harmonies were there. Hmm. And uh, yeah, traditional. 1967, um, Edwin Hawkins records an album entitled Let Us Go Into the House. Okay. And um, the choir convention is, uh, well, the convention was here in D.C. Um, and um, the album didn't get released till 68, but the convention that the Edwin Hawkins singers came to was up here. Did you attend that by any chance? No. You didn't? Did not. Hmm. When you first heard the album in Oh Happy Day, how did that resonate in you? Or oh, what was your... I thought it was wonderful. Um, you know, of course we, you know, we sang it, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Um, later on, I had the pleasure of meeting him, meeting Ed, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a joy. Um, some of his singers, yeah. But um, yeah, it was good times. Mm -hmm. good times. Um, so one could argue that contemporary gospel music stands on the shoulders of artists out of the Church of God in Christ, like yourself, Edwin Hawkins, the Clark sisters. Um, you all are at the peak and beginning era of contemporary gospel music. Would you agree with that? No. <laughs> really? I didn't, I didn't like the word contemporary um, associated with gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you break it down, you have con, and gospel is not a con. Mm. You have temporary, it's not temporary. Mm. You know, we sing the good news, of course, gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and he is yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. So it was the word that mm. um, I, I've never cared for. Uh, I chose progressive. Mm -hmm. You know, the, our music was progressive. Mm. You know, here we are at this time singing this way, and um, you know, later on, you know, wow, what's that sound? It's, music is so universal. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's so endless. Mm -hmm. um, Till you know, to, to call it contemporary and leave it like that, disagree. Mm. Nothing con about it, nothing I've never temporary looked at that about way. it. I did. Yeah. When I first saw that word, that's all I got from there. So, oh, no, 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 no. Hmm. It's not a con, it's not temporary. Mm -hmm. It is progressive. And it's it, here to stay. It's here to stay, mm -hmm. you know. And there will always be a different sound, and there will always be an argument mm -hmm. ab about it, about music, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and I've, I've accepted that. You know, I think most of us know that as artists mm -hmm. and musicians. So we know that we can argue about music and the style until Jesus comes. And, um, you know, and that's all it will be is a debate. You believe this way, I believe that way, mm -hmm. you know, but I do, I do not use the word contemporary. Mm. Yeah. Um, you released a total of 20 albums dating back to 1970, all the way up to the 2000s. Do you happen to have a favorite out of all of those you've recorded? No. Really? No, I, re I really don't. Um, I'm kind of strange. <clears throat> I, when, when, when I'm inspired to write, I'm in it. You know, I'm there. Mm -hmm. When I have recorded it or through with it, I'm, I'm through with it. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like my past. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I wait till I'm inspired again mm -hmm. to do what, you know, to do what. To, I tell you what song has amazed me that um, I rearranged, you know, but um, thankfully I'm giving credit for writing it. But I tell people it's a hymn. Mm -hmm. 
on cloudy days. It's, mm -hmm. It is a hymn. It is. Yeah, it is a hymn, but uh, I heard the melody, you know, and I love I loved the hymn in its original um, style. I loved it, but, you know, but I took it on as a challenge. I loved it so much, but I didn't necessarily want to sing it that way, mm -hmm. you know, so um, <clears throat> I, I arranged it. And uh, I looked at it as a, wow, you know, a beautiful challenge that I think came out very well. And it's it must, one of your biggest hits. It must did, yeah, because, uh, you know, people still ask for it, and it, it you know, it makes me feel good, but I'm, I'm just shocked mm. about it. But, um, you I recently think. performed it at um, Mother Louise Patterson's yeah. funeral. Yeah, um, yeah, she, she would never let me forget, you know what I want. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> And what, uh, what was your uh, relationship with the Pattersons? Uh, you were uh, the minister of music at the church. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, they, were, they were my oldest daughter, godparents, and um, loved them dearly. Mm. What, what can I say? Louise and I, we were very close. Mm. And uh, in fact, we talked maybe two weeks before she passed. Really, and I had no idea that she was leaving us. I really didn't. We were planning Thanksgiving dinner, hmm. and I was letting her know what I wasn't prepared. She loved my rice, mm -hmm. and I told her I'm not fixing rice this year. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, in fact, you know, you have um, what did I tell her? So you got you know plenty of um, coupons, um, gift gift certificates. I said we're gonna we're gonna go out. <laughs> for Thanksgiving, you know, no more, nobody's cooking. And of course it didn't happen. You know, so it was a blow. Mm. It was a blow, but uh, yeah. 1970, you released your first album, God Gave Me a Song, mm -hmm. with the Interdenominational Youth Choir of Washington, D.C. in Maryland. Uh, what was the inspiration behind writing that song? <laughs> Um, no great inspiration, I'm sorry to say. I was attending um, college at the time, 60, 67, 68. What school? Um, University of Maryland, okay. College Park. And um, I came home one evening and my mother said, do, do pre-call. And he said, um, get a choir together for Sunday, meet a choir. And I uh, said, so, oh my God. So anyway, I immediately went to the piano. And uh, it just came to me. Hmm. God gave me a song. And, uh, you know, it's just that simple. You know, I, I tell people, no, no, well, I call it no great inspiration. You know, I didn't have, the only experience was, you know, Dupree was a little rough. So, hey, I better get something together. <laughs> you know, he's going to be upset. <laughs> You know, so again, I just came, sat at the piano, and began to uh, to write that. Wow. You know, and when you think about it, you know, the, the Lord, we start thinking about the goodness of the Lord, you know, that, that's easy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been so good to me, open doors. I can, you Can know. I see? One of my yeah. favorite, that's my favorite part of the song. <laughs> yes, and uh, mine too. It's not the power. It's, uh, it's, it's those words mm -hmm. right in the middle of it, but that's how. And then that song would resonate with a new generation like myself yeah. because of uh, Bobby Jones right. recording it. And yeah. I remember as a kid him performing it with the New Life Singers yeah. many times yes. to open their show. Yes, yeah. yes, um, yes. 1973, Donny Hathaway releases Extensions of a Man. Um, yeah, one of my favorites. One of my favorites also. Um, <laughs> On that album, there's a song called Love, Love, Love. Mm -hmm. And a little birdie told me that the background that does those notes, those high-pitched notes, is you yeah. and your singers. Is at, that true? At that time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't go there now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a beautiful experience. It really? really was. Yeah, he, he asked for me. And, um, and um, yeah, we, we went to New York. And um, did did that beautiful experience. Donnie was a beautiful, um, beautiful young man. And uh, what was that? How'd you meet Donnie Hathaway? Like, 
We, we met him through a mutual friend, Ed Duncan. I was trying to think of his mm. name earlier. That was, that was his name. He's no longer with us. But Ed Duncan introduced, introduced me to Donnie. And if I'm not mistaken, he introduced me to Roberta. Or maybe Donnie, don't, don't, re don't, really, don't quite remember all of it, but it was Ed Duncan that we shared friendship with. And um, I met him during that time. He brought him to Refreshing Spring. Mm -hmm. um, he wanted to learn how to beat a tambourine, so my brother, <laughs> my brother-in-law, showed him how to beat the tambourine. It, it was a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. It really was. Beautiful person. Wow. Loved his music. Still mm -hmm. do to this day. Yeah. 1975. Minor Summers and the Minor Summers Singers released their self-entitled album. On this album is a song. Oh, How Precious, the first uh, yeah. uh, recording of it. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me about the inspiration behind that song? <laughs> um, no, no great inspiration other than, you know, I tell people that I'm grateful to my upbringing. Um, my mother kept us in the church mm -hmm. on our needs. Mm -hmm. Um, Saturday, I can reflect in Saturday night, we had all night tarry service and prayer meetings. And my sister and I, we were there fasting and praying with, you know, with uh, the other, you know, mothers and mm -hmm. deacons of the mm -hmm. church. And uh, so writing, I think it's just reflecting on my lifestyle. And, and that was my lifestyle. I, I did nothing else, mm. you know. I'm like, not perfect, wasn't perfect, not perfect. But be, again, the upbringing, you know, um, they, it, was, it's no, it was no problem talking about how precious mm -hmm. he is. Mm -hmm. And um, you, usually the melody comes first. And when I, when I heard it, then the words just flowed with it, you know, when you're lonely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, heart filled with distress. Remember, God cares mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, when you're in doubt and you can't find no way out, He'll see you through. Mm -hmm. Just call on the name of Jesus. No need to call out loud. That has been a uh, a, a problem with the recent um, musicians that have uh, artists that have sung. They um, I don't know what they say there, but they use the wrong words. I think I've heard some people say aloud. And yes, yeah, so, no, it's just call on the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. No need to call out loud. Mm -hmm. You can whisper, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, how precious. Mm -hmm. Precious is his name. And uh, then the vamp on that you borrow from uh, Maceo Woods Christian Tabernacle, the vamp of uh, the name of Jesus. And the modulation of uh, how they do the Jesus response. Did I? It sounds like it. It sounds very <laughs> similar because, you know, both of those songs have that in the vamp. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 Well, you know what, that's, well, that was, that was kind of common during, during that time. In, well, in, well, in Refreshing Spring it was. Really? Yeah, it really was. We, we, we did that a lot. Mm. Yeah, so. You know, maybe he took it from us. I don't hmm. know. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Um, years later, you would go on to record that song with um, James Cleveland and GMWA. Uh, was that in Madison Square Garden, correct? Ooh, oh, how precious. It was in New York. I do know that recording was in New York. I think your, your memory is better than mine <laughs> at, this, at this time. Um, I believe it was Madison Square Garden. Did, did I lead it? Yes, you led it. A. Jeffrey LaValle is on the organ, and okay. he is wearing the organ out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, when, you, when, you, when you bring him up, I think about the days when we were together and worked all the time. There were times when I didn't feel like singing, mm -hmm. you know, but after he would get on that organ, <laughs> I used to tell him, see, now you made me, <laughs> you made me scream tonight. And he said, well, you needed to. <laughs> <laughs> you needed to, um, but um, th those were wonderful experiences, stepping stones, um, if you will. Um, Any fond memories of James Cleveland? 
yes, yes. We became friends. We became friends. Mm. And uh, whenever he would come in the area, he would come to the house. And um, mother would fix dinner for him and the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a beautiful time. Nice, amazing. It was a beautiful time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> 1976, you released a follow-up album with your church choir, Refreshing Springs. Um, this album features the hit song and the classic, I Found Jesus and I'm Glad. Uh, um, can you tell us about that song and, <laughs> and um, that recording and all of that? Um, I wrote that song sitting outside of the D.C. Public Library at the time, waiting for my sister. I was picking her up from work. And I was across the street, part of the waiting for her. And um, the melody, the words sort of came together, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, that was it. I, I always like to carry a paper with me because you never know when that inspiration was, you know, would come. And uh, I just wrote the words and the music down at wow. that day. Yeah. That, and it just flowed. It just came, yeah. Mm, nice. That, for many, many, many years, that was my favorite song. I would open up with that. And I know people would get tired of it, but I, I couldn't get going until I was singing, you mm. know. And then when Twinkie heard it, she took it to the next level, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, but that was, you know, for many years, that was one of my favorites. Mm. She says one of hers. Really? Yeah. What is your um, dynamic with the Clark sisters and Twinkie Clark? What is? Oh, we, we're friends. Really? Yeah, we're friends, and I believe we always will be. I love them, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you know, they they could do no wrong, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. They, you know, it's it's a genuine love there, mm -hmm. and I think it stemmed from my relationship with their mother. mother. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna back up to Oh How Precious. <laughs> Did you ever know or have the idea or thought that that song would resonate with a new generation no. decades oh, later no. and do what it has done today? Isn't, isn't that beautiful? That's amazing. Isn't, I mean, it's beautiful. It's no I'll, secret I'll, what God can do. Yes, and, and I, I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's no jealousy there, what have you. I, I, again, that's why I, I have problems with that word contemporary. Just for now, this period, no. Mm. You know, I'm hoping when I'm gone that somebody else will come along and rearrange, their, rearrange that mm -hmm. and take it to the next level. Music created by God, of course, and for his purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, will, it will continue. Mm -hmm. It will continue to soar. You know, as long as there are people that are in touch and with the Spirit of God, you know, what he's saying at that time. And it's, and it's only, well, I won't say it's only musicians, but I, I believe God created us, those of us who are musicians, to hear his voice. Yes. And, um, you know, uh, again, when your relationship is, is so, so real when it comes to your walk, your talk, mm -hmm. your living, mm -hmm. you know, you will hear it. Mm -hmm. You will hear it and we, we, you will, whatever you are hearing, you know, naturally because we're here in the, in the hum, um, humanity, we, we've got to end the song, but the song goes on. Mm -hmm. It becomes your life. Yeah, mm -hmm. the song, it, 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 it goes on and uh, I know, oh how precious and the other songs that these you know, artists are writing, what have you, you, you know that anointing is on it because it's still going on. Still blessing it hasn't a, stopped. a new generation of exactly. people. Exactly. I never would have thought it, you know. There's but probably not a church choir that doesn't sing a lot sing, I know. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, <laughs> the last time I was in Pittsburgh, I think I was in Pittsburgh, and um, I just walked in. You know, the church, and they were singing. I said, "My God!" I heard the organ mm. before I, you know, before I got through the doors. I said, "Wow!" <laughs> you know, but it it blesses, and I, and I'm and I'm grateful. That's mm. all. I'm grateful to God. 
That's amazing. Yeah. 1977, you released a self-entitled album entitled Marna. Um, Did I? Yeah, in <laughs> which you cover a Stevie Wonder classic, Have a Talk with God. Yes. Um, 78, you release uh, Life is Fragile, Handle with Prayer. You cover Do You Know Where You're Going To, yes. a Diana Ross classic, something covering uh, secular music back then wasn't a common thing in gospel. Um, <laughs> but it in was inspirational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What made you take the risk in recording those classics? I don't songs? know. I guess because it touched me, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and, and again, Music has no limits, you know. I think it's how it's perceived and how it's received. Um, you know, yes, secular artists wrote it, you know, but, uh, you know, I, as a gospel artist, hey, I love the songs, mm. and, you know. And the message, do you know where you're going to? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, good message. Mm. <laughs> it should make you think, right. you know. Yeah. Have a talk with God. Well, you know, Steve, he, he's a Christian, mm -hmm. you know, so. Part of the Church of God in Christ. Exactly. So, I mean, I had no problems doing that, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm, you know what? I'm grateful to my mother. My mother was always a ch good old church mother. But she never, um, she always allowed me to listen to all types of music. And uh, I, I think that helped me. Um, I didn't listen to all types of music to get into it mm -hmm. um, from, you know, from the standpoint of, of living it, you know, but again, I, I love the sound, mm -hmm. you know, wow, wow, you know, but it just, you know, but um, I listen to jazz, rock, pop, country, everything, you know, and hey, mm. it, you know, to me it's a blessing. Mm. 1979, you um, record a song for you, um, oh, Donnie yeah. Hathaway's, mm -hmm. a cover of his song, mm -hmm. A Song for You. Um, was that in homage to him passing or? Um, again, I love the song. I used it um, when I got married. Um, instead of walking into Here Come the Bride, we walked into that. Really? Yeah. Amazing. Up my arm. And uh, Savoy, the staff, they were there at my wedding. Fred Mendelssohn at the time, um, he, oh, he fell in love with it. So he said, okay, because the next album you do, you know, we're going to use that song. Hmm. So that's how that came about. Really? Mm -hmm. So did you sing it at your wedding? No. Um, Jeffrey had the choir to do it. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. So they came down the, the wedding party. They mm -hmm. sang it coming down. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, 1980, you released two albums. One of those you record with Temple of Deliverance, um, which was the church of um, Bishop yeah. Patterson. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us about your time being a minister of music there? Um, how long were you a minister of music there? I was just there for three and a half years. Um, reason being, while there, I heard God, God's voice him telling me to go back home and get into inner city ministry. And um, so that, that's what I did. Hmm. Um, and, you know, I had planned on staying there for a while, but I kept hearing inner city. And um, sure enough, about three months after I moved back home, phone rang and it was... Um, someone associated with the Department of, I think, Housing. Yeah, the Housing Authority here in D.C. Mm -hmm. And they called and they said, uh, you know, said Ms. They identified themselves, Miss Summers, we need your help. We need you to go into the inner cities. I couldn't believe it. Wow. I said, wow. I, I was shocked, but mm -hmm. I knew this is what God was saying when I was in Memphis, go back home. And, and that's what we did. And... Um, Got a group together, and we've been all in search some quarters around here and off New York Avenue and administered to the children. Really? And um, Southeast Washington. Um, they loved it. Had a hard time reaching their parents. And as one 
a young man told me, he said, Miss Summers, you never reach them. He said, because these are babies having babies. Mm. And, uh, you know, from that point, it was difficult. You know, the kids enjoyed it. They embraced it. They would call me that lady. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know the, that lady was there and she taught us this. You know, they enjoyed it. But uh, I could never reach their mothers. Mm. Yeah. yeah, had a hard time. But I did it for about three years, you know. Should have gone longer, but I, I gave up. And uh, I regret that till today. But uh, it was, you know, it was beautiful while it lasted. So you've always had a um, joy for mission work. Uh, you also recorded an album at a female prison. prison. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll I tell you how that came about. Um, I started going to the Alderson, no, started at Lorton. Um, it's, I believe it's closed now, um, but it was um, all men prison during that time. But I started going to Lorton, Virginia prison and ministering. Um, I would sing and my partner would give the word. She's, she's gone on a glory, Sus Susie Goldie. Um, but she would deliver the word. Uh, and um, I, don't, I don't know, word spread, and Alderson heard about it, mm -hmm. requested my coming there. And so we did. We busted up those mountains and go to Alderson. And while there, <laughs> um, I met folk that um, I recognized. And, uh, you know, I said, whoa. And uh, one of them was a couple of Church of God and Christ people. And she told me afterwards, someone from Detroit, so naturally we're familiar with Maddie Moss Clark, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and another young lady was from this area, whom I knew well, I knew her family well. And, um, you know, so there were relationships there. And as time went on, because we went back and forth um, there ministering about three or four years. And I'll never forget, I was up ministering, and I saw these two young ladies in the, in the audience, and I looked. So afterwards, you know, while I was singing, I said, uh, I called out their names, and they, their eyes buckled. It. I mean, their mouths open. So af after the service, they came to me, of course, and they said, Miss Summers, how do you know our names? And I told them. I said, I remember you, you two girls, I said, during my middle school days, back then they called it junior high. Mm -hmm. I said, junior high days, I said, you went to Stewart Junior High. And they were just standing there listening to me. I said, and I said, y'all were some of the most disrespectful, but I mean, I took that opportunity to mm -hmm. let them know here I was two years behind them, mm -hmm. you know, but I remember them because they were so disrespectful, mm. you know. I said, that's how I remember you. I said, I'm sorry to see you here, you know. Wow. And yeah, but mm. um, relationships, you know, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 1988, you record another hit, hit album with uh, Timothy Wright. Oh, yes. Um, and uh, that is recorded with Temple of Deliverance Choir, yes. along with Billy Rivers and yes. his singers, mm -hmm. and Olanda Draper mm -hmm. and the Associates. I think it's the first time I ever saw Olanda Draper's and the Associates written on an album. Okay. Um, could you tell me about that recording and um, your friendship with Timothy Wright? Um, well, we were, you know, Church of God and Christ people, mm -hmm. and... Uh, um, on, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> we had gone along with Maddie and Twinkie, um, Mighty Clouds of Joy, mm -hmm. and a few other um, artists. We had gone overseas to um, London, to the UK area, and to, to minister. That was a blessing. And anyway, while there, coming back from some area over there, we were on the bus. And um, Timothy just 
started talking all loud <laughs> on the bus, and it was late. We were tired, mm -hmm. you know. And he said, Myrna Summers, I'm going to write some songs for you for your next album. I said, no, 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 you're not, you can't write for me. I said, that's what I told <laughs> I said, no, you can't write for me. Yes, I can. I said, no, you can't. And so, you know, by that time, everybody was screaming. And I said, no, you can't. I told him, I write mature music. Oh, wow. <laughs> he said, call it what you want. He said, but I'm going to write for you. Well, he did. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's how it came about. Really? Uh, he did. And, and in fact, I wasn't even there at Temple Deliverance when he was teaching it. Because I was, I was, you know, during that time, I was traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was in and out. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I came back uh, for one of my trips, he said, okay, you're going to sing this, that. And he started sharing the music with me. Now, this was the night of the session. Just to show you how we, you know, back in those days, how artists work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, just God. That's all I can say. But he shared with me, um, we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. He said, now, the Lord said for you to sing this. It's going to bring you through many times. You're going to go through a whole lot. You know, so I'm just standing there. Well, at that time, I wasn't going through much. You know, I was, mm -hmm. you know, I was enjoying myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, okay, Timothy. And sure enough, while singing that particular song, Spirit of God came in, in that place, and uh, I, I think that's the most liveliest recording. Oh yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, you know, you could. F I mean, you feel the energy. Yeah. You feel the spirit. Yeah, it, it wasn't a, energy. it wasn't a put on. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm, I, I've said that often. It was the most liveliest session we had done, and that's why I met when I met. Everybody else, so to speak, you know, wonderful musicians. David Britton, yeah, who wrote "Every Praise Is yes, to Our God." Yes, yes, um, and Anthon uh, from New York. He passes. Anthon White, mm. uh, fantastic young man. But you know, we met, and uh, I, I tell you, Timothy had rearranged. That's what. Faith is for. Right. Friends are for. Maybe that's what faith is for. And I, here I go again, I had problems with that song because of uh, where it came, originated mm -hmm. from, you know. And so Anthon had to step in. He had to get off the piano and really minister to me about, about music, you know. And, uh, you know, so we did that. And... Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful to God for the learning experiences that I've had, you know, not just through music, but, but through word. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it goes hand in hand. It does. It does. It, it does. It goes hand in hand. So, you know, my experiences, you know, coming this far even have not all been in music. But um, I, I believe I love the word mm -hmm. better than I love music, mm -hmm. you know, because... Um, it, you know, it's the word that will, well, you know, music will too, but will last. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. But, uh, yeah, that was that was an experience, but, you know. Um, it's one that, of the best bands yeah, on that album. On that album, oh my yeah, God. yeah. It, it was good, mm. you know, it, it was good. I later told him, you know, you, you did it. Boy, I didn't think you could, but <laughs> he said, he said, yeah, he said, the, the Lord told me, I said, all right, Timothy, you know. And I don't think there was a church choir I know. around that did not saying we're going to make <laughs> They're it. They're going to make it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's another song on that album that was just as good. Keep the Faith? Keep the Faith is good. Mm -hmm. That's one uh, of my favorites. Yeah, keep, keep, the, keep the Faith is good. Uh, magnify him. Magnify him. Yeah, so that was a big one. Yeah, that that was that was a big one. Mm -hmm. You know, but he he wrote them. That album is just full of energy. It's it my is. favorite. It is. Yeah. It is. 1993, you record an album with one of my favorite choirs, being I'm from Dallas, the Dallas Fort Worth <laughs> Mass Choir. Yes. Um, entitled yes. Deliverance, mm -hmm. um, and that uh, title, that song, uh, was written by. Uh, Kurt, Kurt Franklin, Franklin. Mm -hmm. um, 
Could you tell us about that experience in working with oh. those phenomenal musicians, Kurt Franklin, Carnell Morrell, yeah, um, the late, Chinua, the late Philip, yep, um, Philip uh, Stewart, I believe, yeah. Uh, okay, can't think of the last name. <laughs> well, it was it was a funny experience because when I got, to, I had never met these guys, mm -hmm. including Kurt, because he, you know, he wasn't who he is now, right? You know, but. Um, I had arrived in Dallas, gone to the hotel, and um, I had gone to bed. And the phone rang, and it was the guys calling. They wanted me to come. They were going to come and get me. I said, I said it is, and it was maybe midnight, mm -hmm. you know, 11. I, mean, I said, I'm in bed. So, okay, Mary, we want you to hear these songs before the rehearsal, which was the next night. And uh, they came, you know, and... I, in my singleness, got in the car with these guys. Didn't know them, but I trusted them. So, and they brought me to the church. Where we, um, Carver Heights. Yes. Baptist Church. Yes, yep. yes. And mm -hmm. um, every song they shared with me, I loved. Mm. In fact, I ended up um, singing about three or four of um, Kirk's writings, um, Deliverances, one of them. Mm -hmm. Home was the other one. I remember Home. Really? Home is a wonderful song. Mm. You know, it, Savoy failed to market it. You know, but it's, it's a wonderful it's album. It's a wonderful album. Wonderful yeah. album, yeah. But um, that relationship, you know, grew. And uh, in fact, a few years ago when we went to Nashville, and um, Kirk and I, Kirk had a, had a moment and we sat down and he asked me, he said, what happened with that? Why didn't it go? And I told him, I said, uh, I said, you happened. Hmm. That's why, you know, that's why it didn't go. I said, uh, Savoy could not have done with you what others did. Mm -hmm. You would not have been where you are now mm -hmm. had Savoy, you know, they didn't have the, the uh, wherewithal or what have you to put that album with. It needed to go, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I said, that's all. I said, well, nothing wrong with the music. Fantastic mm -hmm. music. I said, but the Lord knew where he wanted you to go. I, I, again, when, when I talk about music and its endlessness, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, Kirk came from an, out from another bag, yeah. you know, to reach a generation that I never would have reached. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, I said, that's all, babe. I said, you're okay. You yeah, know, the album is okay, you know. One of these days, you know, hey, we'll do something with it mm -hmm. again. I believe that mm -hmm. because it's, the songs are too nice. Yeah. Yeah. And they need to be shared, yeah, really definitely. shared. Yeah. We'll do something. It's no secret what God, what can, God do. can do. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you realize that you have given a platform to such phenomenal young musicians from... A. Jeffrey LaValle, David Britton, Kirk Franklin, a lot of them came by way of yeah. you. Do you realize your I impact? didn't realize it at the time. I've, I've heard about it more in recent years um, because these guys have come up to me hmm. and, you know, say, you may not remember me, but blah, 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 you know, and uh, say, wow, um, I, I guess maybe one of uh, I'm, I'm going to blow it, so maybe I shouldn't even bring it up, but it's a pop artist that's out now. <clears throat> but they took, <laughs> you know, with, with this, um, this hip-hop music, you know, you have to listen closely. But anyway, they, they took some portions of um, earlier recordings from me and put it on there. Really? They um, sampled it? You sampled it. That's really? the word. Yeah. Huh. And... Um, yeah, they, they sample it. They um, did get your permission, right? Of course not. <laughs> oh, they did not. I sang it, but I didn't write it. Uh. The um, particular samples that I'm talking about, um, Henry Davis. Mm. I don't know if you know him, but uh, remember the voice of Supremes back in the day? It sounds very familiar. You, you're too young. But, but uh, Henry played for them. He was part of that. He wrote the song that... Uh, that um, the young man t took it and sampled it and made a hit. Can't think of his name now, but anyway, hmm. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of the song? Was it Higher? Higher, okay. Higher. Hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, my grandkids, 
they heard it. <clears throat> they heard it. And I never forget what border they called. They say, Grandma, did you sing with um and they named the artist? I said, No, I said, never met him. <laughs> they said, Well, this is your voice. Hmm. And um sure enough they sent it to me and I listened. I said, Oh my God. I said, Yeah, I did that with Temple Deliverance. Wow. I said back in the day, I said, uh, they said oh, you get, you get paid? Did you get paid for us? And not yet. But, <laughs> <laughs> we shall see what happens. But uh, you know, I'm not a lover of money, mm -hmm. so I, you know, I guess he, I don't have any because I've never been a lover of it. <laughs> you know, but um, it's okay. You know, but the, it was used, mm -hmm. and uh, that's you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Did you uh, remain friends with Timothy Wright? Oh, oh yeah, really. Timothy and Betty, yeah, hmm. yeah, they were they were good friends of mine. Mm -hmm. um, Two thousand six, you released an album with Reed Temple, uh, where you were the minister of music for many years. Could mm -hmm. you tell me about your time at Reed Temple? Oh, it's beautiful. We we were there for twenty twenty three years. Wow. Yeah, we just we just left this past December. Um, it came under new new leadership. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to say it, but my time was, was over mm -hmm. there, you know, so we, we recognized it mm -hmm. and uh, we chose to leave. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you got to mention a few names to you and, and I want you to describe uh, <laughs> what comes to mind when I mention these names. Richard Odom. Richard Odom, mm -hmm. ah, phenomenal. What can I say about him? Phenomenal. Um, we still keep in touch uh, now and um, praying, praying for him. He's had some medical challenges, but uh, Richard's phenomenal. We love him. Mm -hmm. Richard yeah. Smallwood. Oh, and, uh, that, uh, that's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my guy. We have been friends for many, many, many years. Uh, we, um, you know, Richard, Richard is small, but phenomenal. I love his music. Mm. Love him. Kathy Taylor. Uh, okay, met her in recent years because of, um, uh, what a, oh, how precious. Mm -hmm. And uh, she tears it up. Yep. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Love her. Mm. Yeah. So um, what is the life of Myrna Summers like? What do you enjoy doing in your free time? Reading. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm a reader. I always have been. I love the different versions or translations of Bibles. Mm. And uh, even when I'm studying, trying to, I don't, I don't call them sermons. I call them presentations. Mm -hmm. when, I put a, when I deal with the written word, you know, I use all translations. So not all translations. I don't have all translations, but those that I have, you know, all the Bibles just be open up, you know, mm -hmm. to better understand, you know, because I'm not a learned, um, um, you know, um, Bible person or what have you. But uh, that's, I look at it as a challenge and uh, I, I love it. But that's, that's what I read. I read basically Bibles mm. and, uh, you know, have a reading plan that uh, I follow and you know, just trying to study to show thyself approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you feel about gospel music today and the um, how it has evolved? How do you feel about it? Well, <clears throat> I, I, I do hope that, um, you know, I'm old school and I think I always will be, mm -hmm. um, you know. Music today, gospel, gospel music today. It's 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 okay. It's it's, it's I, I still prefer the old school, mm -hmm. the old school um, sound or what have you. I'm more. Um, how should I, how should I put it? I I just hope that those that are coming out today have a personal relationship with the Lord and not just doing it for money, so mm -hmm. for the popularity of it. Or fame. Yeah, yeah, fame. That's that's my prayer, Lord. You know, I hope, 
your musicians, you know, love you mm -hmm. and, um, you know, trying to live for you. And that's it, because, again, music will always be different. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who, do you have any favorite artists or who are some of your favorite artists out today? Out today? Oh, gosh, there's really, there's, there's so many. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still a lover of the Clarks sisters and uh, you know, that, that family. Mm -hmm. They're just so gifted, mm -hmm. so talented. Um, you know what, there, there's so many unknowns that are fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and of course I haven't heard them all, but you know, you, you go to this church, you go to that church, and you, you know, you're just amazed. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think we've heard, perhaps maybe even the best yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they just, it's too many, mm -hmm. it's, you know, so many yep. out there. But uh, I, I love talents. I love giftings, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, a, f a favorite, well, that's, that'll be hard to tell. My God, you got... Chris Crystal, Church of God in Christ artist. Crystal Rucker? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. bad girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you got Kathy Taylor. I mean, but these, but these are folk that I can identify with because mm -hmm. of their overall sound. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. Not that I dislike others. It's not that at all. But um, we have a tendency, those that, um, you know, we're around more or mm -hmm. what have you, you know. You know, but oh, it's, it's just so many, mm. so many. Um, Hezekiah Walker, I think I love anything Hezekiah writes. Really? Yeah, mm. I, I love his music. I do too. <laughs> it's, it's energetic, it's fiery, and um, of course, when I said energetic, that's when I thought about remembered um, oh, mm. <laughs> one that's all over the stage. Uh, Ricky Dillard? No, not Ricky. But, but we are buddies. <laughs> yeah, he's he's my, he's my baby. Yeah, Rick is good. Oh, it'll, it'll come to me. Not Donna Lawrence. No, no Donna, but I love his music. I, I, I love him. You know what? I, I love them all. I mm -hmm. mean... Kirk Carr? Uh, Kirk Carr, one of know? my favorite. No, keep on. You, you bring him up. No, Kirk Carr, I love him. Beautiful music. Beautiful. Orlando Draper, what was it like? Um, I didn't know you... Orlando well. Uh -huh. I, I, I really didn't. You know, then I guess when I was, you know, because, I mean, that album, it just came up suddenly. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking, you know, it's Timothy's album, and it, it turns out to be my album. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just happened so differently. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't get a chance to really learn or be around Orlando before, you know, he left us. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm still trying to think of the young man. <laughs> oh, okay. What suggestions would you give to young and up and coming gospel artists? Have a relationship with the Lord, first and foremost, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, the, don't 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 run after the monies, but run after God, you know what He can do um, for you. With it, trust Him. Mm -hmm. Trust trust God. You know, hey, even I in the in the beginning, uh, I was pursuing the song. Mm -hmm. I was pursuing, you know, hey, I wanted to have a number one tune. Really, before I gradu before I graduated from high school, mm -hmm. um, in preparing my um, high school, whatever they called it at the at the church. Recital. Um, no, it wasn't a recital. I had to um, share, I guess, my goals or what mm -hmm. have you. Mm -hmm. And all of my goals, unfortunately, were, were material goals. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I was I was a kid still. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, but the Lord, in His grace, allowed them all, allowed me to accomplish all of them as wow. far as the number one hits and an album. Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. You know, but naturally, l later years, when, I, when my walk started getting, um, you know, cl 
closer to God, mm -hmm. you know, then I started learning Him, you know, and uh, to me, I have a better life today because of it. Mm. You know, I, I would encourage up and coming, you know, hey, get to know the Lord, you know, and the sky will be the limit. Amazing. Um, mm. What was your biggest hit? Ooh. Well, let's say, believe it, believe it or not, and um, Atlantic Records people, they told me back then, they said, God gave me a song, we'll continue to sell. Mm. And it does. Overseas. Mm. Yeah. But so that's your biggest. That, I think that's still the biggest. Bigger I than believe, Uncloudy Day? I believe. Mm. I believe. I believe God gave me a song, and I never sing it. I, I um I've never been impressed to, to <laughs> sing it, to sing it, um, but it still sells. Mm. It's, it's amazing. Yes, on cloudy day, it's, you know, still selling, you know, I'm, I'm just grateful. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody somewhere is being blessed. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's a new technology out called AI technology. AI? Mm hmm And you can, it's kind of like Google, you can ask it anything. So I asked it to describe for me Marna Summer's music, and I'm going to read what it says, and I want to see if you would agree with it. It says, Myra Summers is a prominent gospel singer and evangelist known for her soulful, powerful vocal performances. Her music style is deeply rooted in traditional gospel, but also incorporated elements of jazz, R&B, and other genres. She is particularly known for her dynamic and energetic performances, often backed by a large choir and her ability to create an electrifying atmosphere of worship through her music. Additionally, her music often conveys messages of hope, faith and social justice, making her a beloved figure in the gospel community. Some of her most well-known songs include We're Going to Make It, Uncloudy Day, and I found what I'm looking for. What's that? <laughs> I don't know what the last one was. I've never heard of that. <laughs> uh, I've never heard of that one. I haven't either. <laughs> but the other stuff within there, yeah. would you agree with that agree as a with great it. description? I agree with mm -hmm. Whoever wrote that, yeah, I agree mm. with except for that last line. <laughs> I never, maybe they were talking about I found Jesus. That's what I think they were talking about. I think so too, to, yes, yeah. Um, you know, I, yeah, maybe that's what it was. But um, I, I agree with that. Mm. Yeah, I, again, even those infusions of, of the, the different genres, mm -hmm. it's because of my upbringing. I listen to it, mm -hmm. all types, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you uh, did Symphony with the Divas. Um, oh, wonderful time. Multiple years. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us about that, those performances? <laughs> oh, God, they were, they were wonderful. Young man out of Dallas. Curtis started, King. Yeah, started that. And Curtis brought, the, um, brought us together, the gospel, the influences. Mm -hmm. Brought the different music together. Um, oh, wonderful experience. I'm a lover of orchestras, mm -hmm. and uh, he offered that first experience to me of singing with an orchestra. Wow. And, uh, and he, you deliver electrifying performance, uh, directing well, the choir on Uncloudy Day. That was yes, incredible. Yes, and uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was beautiful. What, what can I say? And what, what blesses me when these young people in the orchestra, the last one we did, they came to me telling me, they said, oh, that unclouded day is a wonderful arrangement. Mm. You know, and I thank them all, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they loved it, mm -hmm. you know, and gosh, I love what they gave, you yeah. know. Yeah, it's, it's just beautiful. And the mixture of people, I, en I enjoy that. Um, the, class, the classical mm -hmm. artist, um, oh, name escaped me now, but she, um, mm. She gave me some good advice. I can't think of her, her name now, she's, but she was one of the classical artists. Mm -hmm. And she called me to her dressing room one night and shared something, because I was very upset because <laughs> they, had, they pitched the song too high mm -hmm. for me, so I was struggling. And uh, 
And she told me, she said, Miss Summers, she said, oh, whenever you come in front of an audience and start singing, she said, they're not hearing your voice. She said, they're hearing your heart. Mm. And I looked at her and I said, thank, thank you. I just thanked her. She said, they're hearing your heart. They don't hear your voice. They're hearing your heart. Hmm. So she said, so don't let something like a wrong key. He, she said, as an artist, I know what you're going through. She said, don't get me wrong, you know, but she said, concentrate on, you know, what you're giving, mm -hmm. you know, from your heart, because that's what we are hearing wow. when you get up. So she put me in, in place, in hmm. check. Hmm. Yeah. Um, the legacy of your music um, is multi-generational and uh, you've been honored at the Stella Awards. However, could you tell me how you would most like to be remembered as a artist and an individual? Um, one who lived the life that she sang. That's how I want to be remembered. Um, she not only sang gospel, but she lived mm. gospel. You know, she not only sang the spiritual music already, but she lived it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 the legend. Amazing. That I wish to to live or to leave. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for speaking with me and taking the time to have this conversation with me. I Thank thoroughly you. enjoyed it. I enjoyed I hope it. that it blesses people. Um, and um, yeah. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Trey Talks.